In this video, I'm going to answer one of the most asked questions on my channel. How do I send video wirelessly? Hello, I'm Steven Ballast. Welcome to my channel where I explore worship technology solutions. Definitely one of the most often repeated questions that has come up over the years here on my channel is how do I connect my cameras wirelessly? And to be honest, until recently the answer I've given is that you can do it, but it's very cost prohibitive. Just a few years ago, it would cost you a couple thousand dollars to send an HD video signal wirelessly with any kind of reliability and with low latency. But thanks to a new crop of companies making wireless video transmitters, I'm happy to say that the cost is coming down. I've been using this Hollyland Mars 400S for the past several months. There's a link to it down in the description of this video. And I have to say I've been really impressed with its performance. So let's look at the things you need to look out for and be aware of to successfully implement a wireless system in your live video production. First of all, be aware of the amount of latency the system will introduce. The amount of time it takes from when you input a video signal into the transmitter until that signal comes out of the receiver. As a side note, if the manufacturer doesn't make that information available, it's probably going to be unusable for live productions. The Mars 400S has a latency of 0.1 seconds or 100 milliseconds, which is about three frames of video for 30 frames per second. Three frames is right on the edge of what's noticeable to a trained eye. Usually three frames of difference in your audio and video is where you'll just start to notice a sync issue. There are several ways you can deal with that when using a wireless transmitter in a live production with other cameras that don't have that amount of latency. The first is, Purchase a wireless transmitter with zero latency. The Hollyland Cosmo 600 is a system that has zero latency, but at a cost increase. Another approach is to use your wireless system for shots where three frames of audio sync isn't gonna be critical. For us here at our church, I've been using this system during the shutdown of 2020 to put cameras in different places around our room to get interesting shots, where three frames of delay isn't gonna be noticeable. A third option is to delay your audio by even one or two frames. Where you need to add that delay depends on where your audio is coming from and what your whole audio path is. But by delaying the audio by a frame or two, that splits the difference between the cabled cameras and the wireless camera and brings them both under three frames of difference. And you'll have a hard time telling that they aren't all in perfect sync. The Mars 400S also has three modes that determine what happens when the signal starts to degrade, whether you want it to prioritize the image or the latency. And I always run it on speed mode so that it prioritizes latency even if the signal starts to degrade. The next thing to consider is the transmit distance and really your path from the transmitter to the receiver. Most of these devices are gonna be operating in the five gigahertz range so that type of RF transmission is very directional. It doesn't wrap around or penetrate walls very well. So you need to maintain line of sight as best you can between the antennas of the transmitter and the receiver. If you have your video switcher in a different room from your cameras, don't put the receiver in with the video switcher. Rather run some cables from the video switcher to a convenient location in the room with the cameras and locate the receiver there. And then you'll have great reception anywhere in the room. I had a spare SDI line from our switcher to our sound booth, so I put the receiver in the sound booth, and from there I couldn't find anywhere in the room that it would drop the signal, as long as the transmitter and receiver were in the room together. The distance spec of the Mars 400S is 400 feet, which is plenty for just about any size room. I tried walking the transmitter out into the lobby and walking down the hallway away from the sanctuary, and it worked for a little ways, but it wasn't too far down the hall that it dropped the signal. The main thing is, don't expect these systems to penetrate through walls very well. Make sure you are maintaining line of sight and staying within the distance spec and you'll get a reliable connection. Be sure you know how many systems can operate together at the same time before you go out and buy wireless systems for all your cameras. Similar to wireless microphones, most cheaper systems are meant to operate alone or with only a few devices. And as you move up to the more expensive systems, one of the things you are paying for is the ability to run multiple systems at the same time. I only have one of the Mars 400S, so I can't speak into this too much, but according to Hollyland, the Mars 400S is capable of running three systems simultaneously. Another thing to be aware of is cabling. 
This unit has both HDMI and SDI inputs on the transmitter and outputs on the receiver, which is a nice feature because you can use a camera with only HDMI outputs and connect it to a video switcher with SDI inputs without having to make any conversion. The wireless system will do that for you. One word of warning though, if you're using an ATEM video switcher, the output of the Mars 400S receiver is limited to the following video standards. It will take any format on the input to the transmitter, but the output is rounded to whole frame rates. So if you have to run your ATEM at 29.97 or 59.94 frame rates, you will need a format converter between the receiver and the ATEM switcher in order for it to see the signal. Think through how you're gonna power the transmitter. The Mars 400S comes with a power supply to plug in the receiver, but the transmitter needs a battery that you have to purchase separately. It's a common Sony NP-F type battery, so I used some that I had on hand already. They were a smaller capacity than what is recommended, and even then each battery lasted about two hours, so long enough for me to run a whole service on a single battery. It does also have a power connector on it, so if your camera battery has a tap you can use to power it, that will work also. It takes a wide range of voltage, six to 16 volts, so a lot of different camera power systems will work. Finally, the last feature that I'll show you specific to the Mars 400S, which makes it not only good for a live production environment, but also dual use in shooting pre-produced videos, is that you can use it to transmit to an app on your Android or iOS device, which is really handy if you have a camera operator and a director or a lighting gaffer. They can log in on their phone and see what you're shooting. It's a nice feature that would help me justify the cost even more because I can use it in multiple ways. So if you're looking for a way to set up your cameras wirelessly, take a look at the Hollyland products. Having a wireless camera in our video system has really opened up a lot of creativity in our production that we wouldn't have had otherwise. Until next time, bye.